This is The Probe. Good evening. The past few days can pass as the most dramatic in the life of Ghana's parliament. Question is, does it set the tone for many more to come in this 8th parliament? The first meeting or the first session of the 8th parliament was to elect a speaker and inaugurate members plus swear in uh, the president-elect. But these events were characterized by dramatic and chaotic events, including near violent clashes, military invasion, not to talk of ballot box snatching and kicking of voting boots and ballot paper snatching as well. Is this the picture we set out to portray to the rest of the world? I have your questions, contributions and suggestions sent in earlier and tonight I'll do well to go through as many as possible. After all, this is an audience driven show. Keep them coming. It's via WhatsApp, Facebook and Twitter. My guest for tonight has been referred by many as the hero of the moment, man of the match, etc. Others also say he's the rebel leader that must be condemned for his conduct that led to chaotic scenes that could have degenerated. Member of Parliament for Aswasi and Chief Whip of the NDC side of Parliament, Mohammed Mutaka Mubarak, has agreed to be probed by you tonight. We're live on the Joy News channel, Joy 99.7 FM, and a dozen affiliates across Ghana. Joy Prime, we're also around the world. It's myjoyonline.com. DSTV channel, find us on 421. Go TV is 144. We're live on Facebook, Twitter as well. Thank you for joining us. I am MFA Paul. Tomorrow morning. I do not know exactly what has transpired in the Asking on Facebook. It's terrible. Um, not, 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 everyone's now they've brought in military officers fully armed into the Chamber of Parliament. I don't know how, how this is going to end. But this is an invasion of the Chamber of Parliament. This is only going to make this worse. Whoever brought in the military men, and I, 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 I can't even tell if they are actually military men, whoever brought in these uniform wearing individuals into the chamber has done a great, great but Evans, if, if members of parliament have decided to misbehave, what is the best way out? No, the best way out. Yeah, national anthem and other um, um, patriotic songs. Where we are now, I see that some of the armed military men, plus a few police officers also who are fully armed, some of them with, um, with masks, um, face covers, are protecting the single ballot box, which has been in contention since the night began, uh, almost two hours ago now. Um, Wingsing, I'm making the point. I believe the way to solve this was not to call in armed military to the chamber floor. That's what, if you wanted to escalate this, this is what you do. Exactly, Evans. And information I'm just getting. Mm -hmm. Thanks for staying with us. This is the probe, Ghana's eighth parliament, the chaos consensus new direction. Alhaji Mutaka Mubarak is my guest, a Swansea MP, and also the chief whip uh, for the NDC side in parliament, for the eighth parliament. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here on the probe. Yeah, you've you been know, watching Revo, Revo. <laughs> what goes through your mind watching what you did um, well, at night? I mean, looking at it from here, uh, very interesting. Mm. I mean, I, I really wish we didn't get there. But it's just too unfortunate that when people decide to be lawless, you have no other option than to equally do that, just to stop them. Because Which people decided to be lawless? Whoever instructed the military to get there was being lawless, who, when they went and met and were planning that this voting would not be secret, was lawless. When they tried to obstruct the return of Sadat as a chair from allowing the thing to be uh, secret, they were being lawless. Mm. And you couldn't just sit when you see clearly the clerk is helpless. I mean, you keep complaining. I mean, if you could play the video, you could see that I went to the returners as an agent 
from our side, mm -hmm. more than 10 times, complaining. And he sits and is like, there's nothing I can do. Was he intimidated, especially because of comments that you guys made earlier, at least your side, do you think well, that he was intimidated? Well, well, if you were ready to be a return officer, you should be ready not to be intimidated. Mm. You listen to all the views and stick firm to the rules. Unfortunately for us, in this uh, circumstance, the constitution was very clear. I mean, Article 1044, and then outstanding orders 95. It, did, it didn't leave any doubt mm -hmm. where interpretation would be issued, where you can right. clearly say, oh, what does this really mean? Because, I mean, in the case of outstanding orders, if you permit me to just read it, mm -hmm. I mean, order 95, 5. Uh, on the other five, uh, uh, nine five. Mm. Maybe you will read it to okay. the hearing of Ghanaians. Well, so order uh, 595, it yes. says each ballot paper shall be folded so that the name written on it cannot be seen. The ballot paper shall then be collected by an officer of parliament and counted at the table by the clerk who shall then declare the results. So you're talking about the secret ballot, right? And this is the standard mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the constitution, article 104, four. Maybe if you don't mind, you read that for uh, uh, your listeners to listen. So if you have a group of people who have chosen to flout not only the, uh, the outstanding orders, but also the constitution, mm -hmm. and people just sit and say, oh, you should have, tell me what we could have done. Mm. But what did you Watching know? from distance and knowing how rep, uh, helpless the, 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 uh, the clerk, who in this instance was the chair, was. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do anything. I, I just asked, will someone tell me what we could have done other than what we did? Yep. This but, is but, but looking back, looking back on events, I'm sure you've had some introspection, sat back and yeah. watched all the videos and everything that you did that day as a whip leading yeah. your side. Do you think you could have done things differently? I mean, there was no other way we could have done this, mm -hmm. apart from the, what, what we did, believe me. Because it was later that I got to know that they went into a meeting and they were instructed and forced that every single one must show his vote. Mm -hmm. That was a meeting to subject the constitution. Because the constitution says, like I showed you, I mean, you are, I hope yeah. you, if you don't mind reading it to the public, mm -hmm. 1044 mm -hmm. clearly says that when you are electing or removing, it should be by secret. So it voting. says where Parliament is considering a bill to amend the Constitution or where the voting is in relation to the election or removal of any person under this Constitution or under any other law, voting shall be in secret. So if a group of people go to meet that they were going to start to put this provision of the Constitution aside and our standard orders like you, re mm -hmm. you read also mm -hmm. I mean, flout it mm -hmm. and you have a chairperson that sits helpless with all his marsha not knowing what to do. I don't see any other way that we could have resolved this above and the way we, we went. By snatching the ballot box? No, kicking no, the listen, ballot box. listen. Just check representation of uh, the people's uh, law, mm -hmm. which is on voting. On secrecy, it instructs not only the election official, but the candidate or the agent shall maintain and ensure that this is secret. That is the law. So, I mean, when people were talking, I just kept going and said, yeah, look, I'll be ready to meet any committee. I was right. I was lawful. What I did was to take the ballot box to the return officer, mm -hmm. tell him that this person has shown his vote, and therefore I will not allow him to put it in. But the moment you show your vote, that vote is spoiled. That is law. So I was insisting going with the law. So what I did was lawful. Because if you look at all the laws that were, whether the constitution, the standard orders, or the, the representation of the people's law, that is on the election, mm -hmm. on secrecy, it says that the agent or the candidate, Sha, it didn't even use me, Sha, make sure that voting is by secret. Mm. So if anybody was trying to flout that, because the first instance, first, I, I, I moved to the first gentleman who voted to tell him that you cannot put it, and it, it, it resulted in the scaffold. But you are taking the position of the electoral officer. No, that was why the law said that mm. the election officer, the clerk, and the agent, the agent mm. or the candidate. Okay. And in this instance, I was a, I was the an agent. agent. Mm. So I could act just as the election officer. That's the law. Mm. 
So people who are ignorant of the law, they should just themselves confident with the but law. But how about your other members? We saw Mr. Jinapo and we saw Mutala, for instance, also kicking the ballot piece. And that, was, that, was, that, was, that was unfortunate because whilst I, the agent, was protesting that they should not put it in there, this time the ballot box was up. The gentleman ran to put it in. Mm -hmm. And my sister, uh, people keep saying, oh, you could have done it. Tell me which other way we could have done it. But what, what we did made the, that, that boiler box and the content of it to be discarded mm. for the whole process to start afresh, to get everybody to comply with the Constitution. I remember, as a whip, when we were insisting on getting everybody to follow the law, it was a double assault. My members were also voting secret, mm. right? Yeah. My members were also voting secret. So I didn't get the opportunity to also see. It would have been my wish that I also get to know all my members, how they were, how voting. They were voting. But in trying to comply with the law, all of us have to forego that because you could not follow the law and still see how your members were voting. But it's interesting that now you're making reference to the electoral law, making reference to the constitution and all. Today we've been watching the law. There have been concerns that you violated both sides, violated the electoral laws. And then we get to hear that Parliament is the master of his proceedings. Therefore, you cannot be held accountable by the electoral laws. But it, no. it looks like when it suits you, you make reference to the electoral laws. When it doesn't, you say that, that no, you, you can't that, that prosecute us. That is not right. What, what it, I mean, in fact, in, on the floor of the House, we all have immunity. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you can't say you are taking this to court. But we must investigate it and get perpetrators punished. As a parliament, is that like, I mean, if somebody uh, misbehaves in parliament, especially on the floor of the house, you cannot get that person to any court for prosecution because the person has immunity. That is why the house itself, if you look at from our other But at that one, time, you had two. not been sworn in as yes. MPs. Were you yes. MPs at that yeah, time? Yeah, we were MPs elect okay. because we've been elected. Mm -hmm. Our results have been gazetted. Mm -hmm. It was left only the swearing, the swearing in. in. So I believe that. That's what we need to do, to show example to this country. And I keep saying, from the bailiff service to the clerk, all the way to military inv invasion and the police invasion of the uh, chamber, till we got voting, needs to be investigated. Mm. And parliament must set up a committee. All of us who were seen doing one thing or the other appear. What kind of committee are you looking at? Well, obviously, it has to be a committee of the house, mm -hmm. uh, where we must investigate this. Then privileges the, cannot do that, or it has to be a separate committee. Privileges will best suit Carlos. Okay, it will suit so that, Carlos. Yes, Carlos' and not behavior. Your side, not no, the best of what, your side. what 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 uh, what we did? My view. I mean, we may disagree when we meet because, I mean, like you rightly said, we are masters of our rules. We can choose to say that from the very beginning to the end, take everything to privileges, or because the instances were different. This one was about the process of voting. Mm -hmm. So take all the issues before and during the voting to a special committee. And then the misbehavior of Carlos was distinct because he was not an agent. He had no business running to touch the, 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 the ballot uh, papers. And he did, and he snatched it, and he was running out. He was there like a thief. Did you beat him? I did. How did you beat him? What well, did you do? Because, because when he picked the sheets, we were struggling to get the sheets. He torn some and was put it in his mouth. So he put it in his yes. mouth? How many so papers that, did he snatch? You well, because, because some were being counted and they were on the table, we could only deal with those that he snatched. Unfortunately, when we brought them, we put them together. And we noticed that some of the sheets, some of the papers were not there. That was why we insisted that. Fortunately, once we finished counting one, which was 136, and then there was one spot. If you add it, that's 137. Mm -hmm. It meant that the rest, since every single person voted. Unfortunately, let me say that both sides, together with the return officer, were all taking the members. Mm -hmm. And we all saw that the, every person voted, 275. So simply take the 136 that Professor Michael Quay got, the one that was spoiled. The rest is 138. Mm. So, I mean, that was the basis that uh, Honorable, so you uh, right beat Honorable Bobby so you beat him. was, 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 uh, well, I, we were struggling to get all the sheets from him. Mm. I mean, it, so it you was, slapped it was, him. You... It was, it was just unbelievable what he did. Do you regret it? 
Do you regret beating I, I, another I, colleague? I, I, I really wish he did. he didn't do what he did, so that we didn't get to humiliate Parliament to that level. So you don't regret uh, beating him? No, I mean, I, I believe that uh, getting physic on each other was not the right thing. I mean, but under the given circumstances, I, believe me, it was later when I was looking at the clip that I realized all the things that happened. It looks laughable later, but uh, I really believe, I really wish it didn't happen. Mm. Well, let's get into the questions. There, there are a number of them. I have my own set, mm. but uh, I will just not be a conveyor belt tonight. But let's go through uh, the questions that, that have been sent in, a number of them. So uh, we'll start off from WhatsApp. It says, ask him whether he would admit that his singular action set the stage for subsequent happenings. That's from Martha. And then this one also from Boyson says, was Bagming elected uh, or they built a consensus with the NPP to give him the position? If so, is that what the law says? Is Speaker supposed to be appointed or elected? Um, this one also from Francis says, Majority Leader Oseche Mentabunsu disclosed that the choice of Bagbing as Speaker was one of consensus and not by election. What really is the true picture? And then we'll take this final one from Mirajwa for now. Why did his side uh, carry? Okay, so I just uh, lost that one. I think I have this. It says, why did his side carry him after the dissolution of parliament? Uh, Irajwa sends that one in. So the first four questions. The first one is asking, would you admit that your singular action led to set the stage for the subsequent happenings? Well, and I was on the side of the law. That's what I was saying. All I did was lawful. Mm. Because I was the agent for Right Honorable Babin. That was from my sign. And like I quoted all the laws that showed that what I did was the right thing. And I have no regret for it because that was the only thing that would have stopped the misbehavior and abuse of our constitution. Mm. I mean, if you play it again, I don't see any other way that you could do that because it's like it was well coordinated. They went to a meeting to do that. And so it's unfortunate that it happened. It was coordinated? Yeah, it was. Because, wow. I mean, they agreed that this was what they were going to do. Mm. What did they agree on? That they were going to show the paper. If you voted, you have to show it. And I thought that that was against the law. And we were defending the law. Mm. And we were insisting that the law should be followed to the letter. So I don't see how... Is it that you were afraid? Because no. we're told that you had they infiltrated... Were, were, we're told you had infiltrated the I mean, ranks of the FBI side, so I heard, I heard uh, you were scared that... Honorable Chairman said uh -huh. about we bribing. I mean, mm -hmm. I thought that was very unfortunate. Because that was what they did in Africa sense. Mm. They, they were they, yes, they were reaching out to our members and they were offering them all manner of things. How I mean, much? let me tell you, there was how one that was led by... I mean, so shamefully, a Supreme Court judge called a, a colleague, lady, telling her what they will give her. She has children, they will help her take care of her children. She can take fuel from a filling station for the four years. I mean, and the time she, he made those calls, we are, we are, we are looking at all those, mm -hmm. all those things. But the sad thing is that if you are a majority leader, I mean, we have just come from election. I mean, with all these crises, we were in the opposition for four years. I mean, how could we have gotten money to be bribing those who are in government? who every one of them received so much money to support his or her campaign. We, those who <laughs> were struggling to prosecute a campaign, who have surplus money to be given to them. That, 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 that was, that was, I mean, it, it didn't, you, you, don't, you don't need anybody to tell you. Mm -hmm. If you ask every candidate of ours, you virtually have to finance everything that you have to do. With the exception of maybe the pooling agent and some few uh, resources that were sent to support the training of the agent. You had to virtually do everything. So how could we have been bribing? But the thing is that if you have bad leadership, that's what you have. You'll be so scared of your own shadow. I mean, and, and I say this with uh, no regret. Honorable Chairman said it's a very nice gentleman. When it comes to the house and the workings of the house, you can't take that one away from him. But as a leader, I can tell you it's a very terrible one. He doesn't know how to carry people along. Let me give you an also example. Look, in 2009, he was the minority leader with Ambrose Derry as his deputy, with uh, Operanza as his whip, and then uh, Kusi, uh, Gifty Kusi and uh, I as deputies. In 2013, he, knew, he only knew what he did. Then only Ambrose lost. All the others were there. He cleared all of them. Then he came with Nito as a first person, deputy leader, then with Dambuche as whip, then with uh, uh, Natoshi, and then uh, Bafowa. Comes 2017, only, uh, what do you call it, not to she lost. Mm -hmm. He cleared all of them again. Mm -hmm. And then came with Adwasafa as deputy leader, Chairman as whip, 
and then uh, Nindam and Moses as the uh, this one. Only Nindam lost. Mm -hmm. And he's cleared all of them again. again. And he's bringing new team, Afanya Mikings. And I wonder what this party thinks. Because you see, I, and I, I remember Professor Mills, the late Professor Mills very well. I mean, when I went to the ministry and I had my parents, I said, being good is not enough. You need to learn to carry people along. He filled his side because all along when we were calling that, look, you are not reaching out with the kind of numbers that we have. You need to be reaching out. He was calling a bluff on us, and you will hear the threat. Look, if you put up a speaker, we we'll deny you this. Whilst we were strategizing, organizing, being strategic, they were just throwing and blowing. After hot that air. election, have they yeah. reached out? Oh, if still not. Well, maybe, maybe let me say the, the the new whip. I mean, a very nice gentleman. I know don't pray. Mm. I mean, this is the one gentleman that I know mm. since he came to the house, has taken the work of Parliament very seriously. He. He learns, I mean, he will reach out when he doesn't understand something. Even after a hot argument, he will come to you and say, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't really understand this. We tried to help it, teach him and to tell him what to do and what have you. I mean, I wish him well. I believe that with how he had learned, he may be a very good whip. He, reach, he has been reaching okay. out. I mean, but, but speaking of Osei Chen Mensah Bunsu, yeah. a number of questions that have been signaled to go into, but yeah. briefly on Osei Chen Mensah Bunsu, yeah. from all the videos that yeah. we've seen, do you think he played a role in what Carlos Ahinkra did? Yes. How? I mean, you saw the video. Yeah, you couldn't hear the, 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 the audio. You can't, you can't hear it loudly. Mm -hmm. But looking at the video mm -hmm. and what happened, I mean, he has to do a lot of explanation why he claims that he, he was not the one who insulted Carlos. Mm -hmm. You remember there was a, the MP for Tolum mm -hmm. was standing and blocking his view. He asked him to give way. And you see, when someone is, you, he claims that, oh, he just mentioned it to him. If Honorable Chairman, sir, with the greatest of them, maybe for lack of better word, was very responsive at that moment, when he saw Carlos moving towards there, having told you that this is what he wanted to do, if you disagree with him, you could have immediately stood up and held him, or signify those of us who were the agents. With, with that the this speed, is what with this, the speed could no, have done. No, no. Look at look at from Che, from the uh, the leader of government business. He slowly moved there. He didn't rush there. Just watch the video. He slowly walked towards the counting officer before he did the snatching. So what was the chairman expecting? When he was moving towards there, when he has told him this is what he was going to do, and he claims that he told him, that, don't dare do it. And you saw him moving towards there, what were you expecting? Mm. When the, this ballot that we're saying that is spoiled, when I, I, I was very convinced that if we were to litigate on that, that was our vote. Because the person, you remember the nomination? Honorable, right Honorable Babin was nominated first. Mm -hmm. So I want to believe that when the gentleman or whoever did the voting, when the, he thought he was one, so he voted and realized that no, that's not him. Mm -hmm. So he canceled it. The person canceled it and okay. came right here and take. Okay. So I thought that that was a, a, a very straightforward decision. It wasn't that the person ticked here and ticked there. No. There. You could see the tick and it then cancel and then ticked here. But because they wanted to litigate and I was the agent, I took the risk to say, fine, I agree that this is it. This is spoiled. Let's keep it as spoiled. Then, with where he was, he insisted we should show it to him. And you see, you, if you watch the whole video, you see that myself and Anudam Pray had to point that spoiled paper to him. In fact, got it closer to him. Then said, ah, oh, this one, especially when he noticed that it was ours. Oh, this one, they spoiled. Mm. I said, I won't let it go with you. Let's keep it. So he can't tell us that he was not partly responsible for what Carlos. Okay, so on the consensus, uh, he's also said that Mr. Bagbin uh, was he, that's, that's he was absolutely appointed, lie. not elected. I mean, you all saw it. That was absolute lie. Okay. We got there. The, their first decision. Oh, now that uh, the decision has scattered, I said there's nothing that has scattered. For the for us, one lot was counted. You agree that everybody voted. Mm -hmm. We are not going to have a vote. We are not going to have a count. We simply take it out. Okay. So, and when the clerk, the chair was announcing the results, you heard him say elected. So that is his own imagination. When he's like, oh, but we didn't get the figures. We didn't, we didn't get the figures in terms of how many no, he won back. No. In fact, we were we were insisting that the figure be mentioned. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, was the clerk mentioned? said that look, we are here to do an election. I'm not to announce a result. Mine was to declare who had won. And Babi has won. But the, how does Babi a person win elected. when we don't know so, how many so, votes? In fact, it was a problem. It was a problem. But after he read it, I, 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 if, I don't know if you noticed, we were raising our objection. But it was like 
let's move on. Let's move on. Let's quickly get this thing done. And I remember at the point in time, even the general secretary was insisting that, no, you have to get him to do it again. Mm -hmm. Because yes, he said he's been elected. He has to tell the whole world what the figures were. Because it was 136, one spot, and 138. And Honorable Babin got 138. So he was duly elected. Because in our standard orders, once you have two contenders. But you see, the funny thing is that when they saw this, the heat change came to us. Oh, can you allow me to withdraw the nomination of Bible? We said no. You can't withdraw his story because he presented himself, we voted. We won't allow you to withdraw him. Okay. But now that he's saying this, we have to say all the things that happened in the conclave. Because we said no. What we are not yeah, because we said the vote had been done, we've counted, we know the results, it's the result that's going to be declared. We are not going to rerun, we are not going to count these sheets that uh, Carlos took mm -hmm. because it's been tempered with, mm -hmm. but the simple arithmetic is that 275 of us voted. Every single member voted. We have this pile, which is 136, and we have this one that is spoiled. We all know when you take that out, what is left is 138. And the sorting was properly done because the sorting was done by five of us. If you notice, we didn't pour all the content of the box to start us off. We left them in the box and we're picking them one after the other so that we could be sure of every have? single uh, what do you call the ballot, mm -hmm. where it should be placed. So in conclave, so, the NPP side wanted to withdraw the nomination of yeah, Mr. Michael Quay. wanted us to, that, oh, in order to, this, can we allow him to withdraw Professor Quay's uh, nomination? We said we won't allow that because okay. he was duly uh, nominated and seconded. And once it was seconded, it was before the House. Okay. It was no longer, if you want to withdraw, you have to go back to the floor and go through another motion. And we are not ready for that. Let, let's do a number of questions so that we'll be brief with the responses that we can take as many questions as possible. So we're going to Facebook now. Uh, ask my hero if he will contest 2024. If he's not, uh, he should pass the baton to Hamidan, his uh, perfect partner, as far as Aswansi development is concerned. <laughs> Mumuni Summit, uh, send that one in. Uh, this one, it says, is it true that upon counting the votes, it was 136 each uh, with one sport ballot? Why were the speaker's votes not announced? You honestly think your actions on the day were honorable? Uh, Sunu Do uh, sent that one. I think he answered part, part of that. We'll go back to WhatsApp. He says, how do you convince all who observe the chaos in parliament that the actions of our MPs is no different from what we see and hear happening at our polling centers during elections? Senyo sends that one in. So I have two Facebook messages and one uh, WhatsApp. So uh, he's asking if you're going to uh, cont contest in 2024. Yeah, well, I mean, it's too early. You just finished election. Yeah. Life is not just about election. Okay. Like you just finish one election, then you're talking about the next election. Yeah. What must he, why should a president think that I shouldn't contest the next election? <laughs> you contest again. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. it's too early. We just finished okay, election. Course. We are thinking about even developing the concerns. Okay. Why are you talking he about says that? you are his hero. He just wanted to yeah, know. Sure. So Sunudo says, is it true that upon counting the votes, it was 136 each, no, uh, which no, one spot? No. So you answered that part. That's... And then do you honestly think your actions on the day were honorable? Very, because I will defend the Constitution. And you know, the Constitution itself says that we must. And you see, let people go and check our oath. Mm -hmm. The oath that we take. He said, I shall defend this Constitution without fear or favor. And what I did was to defend the Constitution without fear. Mm. So I was, what my action was very honorable because it was in line with what the Constitution requires us as citizens to do. Okay. Well, so there was another one say, saying that your actions, how different is it from the ordinary person when he do, does that at yes. a polling station? I mean, if the person is an agent that was duly accredited to go to a polling station and he sees the law being broken, the person they can must snatch resist. the ballot box. No, it's not snatching. Remember, I didn't snatch it from anybody. It was placed there and I just picked it and returned, took it to the return officer. No, check the video. I pick it, take it to the return and say, tell us that you are not, not ensuring once. the right thing being done. Not once. We are not going. Yes, mm -hmm. because so long as you keep showing the ballot, the, your, vote, your vote to another person, you nullify the vote that okay. you are holding. And okay. I didn't want to have confront, physical confrontation with the person holding the sheet. So I simply say, you cannot put it into this box. Okay. Well, so uh, earlier you, you made an allegation about uh, a Supreme Court judge or a judge, um, yeah. you know, reaching out to... Yeah. One of your members. Yes. Are you able to give us further details? Because that's it's a, it's that's a serious that, no, allegation. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That uh, I mean, not even one person. A number of them. But you see, like I always say, the game is a game of evidence. So you need to put them together mm -hmm. before you can. I'm sure maybe uh, not too long to come. We may have a press conference on that with some detail, some mm -hmm. more details. Mm -hmm. Yes, on all those who have been contacted and what was being offering them and all that. And we'll be happy. If they have anybody, because one, one other thing that I did, 
and I must say, I mean, with all humility, I mean, I know God was so merciful to us. God was on our side, and we worked very hard. I led this operation. 80% to 90% of them was done by me. We were talking to individuals. We were persuading them. We were trying to let them understand that this was in our national interest to get the speaker on the other side so that we can put a check on the mm. executive. Mm. So this was a more persuasive thing. And I spent the almost three, two and a half weeks after the election trying to reach out to as many members, not only on my side, but on the other side. Because the look, side. who said all our members were happy to vote? For Honorable Babin. They who were said, not? No, I'm saying that who said that, oh, once it is Honorable Babin, you assume that everybody will vote for him. So we had to equally work on every member on our side. Even those, because, for example, if I'm told that, oh, MFI, you will go first. But if MFI doesn't get, then we'll take care you get. Mm. Then my tendency is to, be, to make sure that MFI, MFI failed yeah, so that I can come forward. Yeah. So you need to consciously reach out to those persons that, look, even though even if I must fail before Muntaka comes, even if I get him, is bigger and better than Muntaka coming. But the ultimate mission was it not to frustrate government business? No, I can bet you, Emifa, we are going to act in the best national interest. Mm. Take my word, we will act in the best national interest. We will not be just obstruction. No, no, no. We will not just form ourselves into a group of people who will not want to. Who just want government business to fail. No, because it is not in our national interest. It is not in our collective interest. This is the democracy that we have. All of us must play our part. We must defend it. We must make it work. But those abuses is over. Okay. Those abuses where you just go, the document will not even go to cabinet, there will be executive approval, and then there's this speed, want to come and stand down the orders and do every day in a day when it is a 10 million, when it is 100 million loan, when it is billions, those things are over. Mm. We will scrutinize, we will make sure that things are done right. We are not going to stampede parliament to get things done in a day. Things that requires one week. I mean, that's what our standard orders is. The standard order that it tells us, I mean, this thing must take this. You have to go through the motion. We are not going to allow those uh, speed. Mm. Where there's a need for speed, believe me, we'll do it. I okay. mean, if, may God forbid, we're at war with our neighbors and requires that we must do something within a day. We will lead it with speed. Things that we need to do, if there's some disaster and something that needs to be done quickly, we'll do it. If there's something that's supposed to go to our citizens to be able to rescue them, we'll do it. Mm. But this wanton stealing and abuse of office, it is over. Anybody sitting out there thinking that it can, oh, we can get them, we can try to negotiate, please, you can't negotiate criminality. Mm. We'll but we know that um, some names came up for the second deputy speaker position yes. on your side. Yes. Uh, Dr. Dominic Ayeni, for instance, sure. his name came up. Um, Mahama Yaga's name came up. Yeah. So how come you nominated the former MP on the Yes, call? you see, uh, we, needed, we needed to be magnanimous with our victory. Mm. Because we, our best bet, like I was telling you, one of the challenges as a whip I had. Oh, if we go and Babin doesn't get. Mm -hmm. Then we have Bernard Ahia for and Dominic Ayini to present. So if you are not careful, <laughs> the, the two of them will help Babin to fail okay. so that they can have the food for it. But I can bet you, I respected the two gentlemen. Because Dominic, after I spoke to him, he said, Whip, take my word. I'm going to even canvas more for Babin to get. Because I know Babin getting is far better than just being a deputy. Mm -hmm. And he worked, and I saw him doing a lot of work within his caucus. I had regional caucuses that had to be taxed and to work. But when we won, with all the things that happened, mm -hmm. then our colleagues came. Do we want to go vote? The whole country is waiting to inaugurate the president. We could have insisted, oh, we want to vote. Mm -hmm. First deputy speaker, takes another three hours. Second deputy speaker, takes another three hours. Then you have invited guests all around. Uh, mm -hmm. Our neighbors, West Africa and Africa, they keep waiting. That's why I told you that we will continue to act in the best national interest. So to avoid that, we said, okay, we've taken the speaker, take the first deputy, we'll take the second. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, the second deputy speaker, now that you've taken the speaker, give us both. We said, no, but the constitution doesn't allow you to take both. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I mean, the constitution is very clear that the two deputy speakers will not come from the same party. The best we can do is to give it to the independent. Okay. And that's what
committed to. It was like a, was it yeah. like a way, your way of reaching out to see if he can it's be just, on your side? Just to let them understand, that <laughs> it is not all about this. As soon to say, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. this devil and witch thing. No, okay. we've gotten the speaker. We know the speaker will have a lot of work to do. Let's start by reaching out. Mm -hmm. What they fail to do, even in the heat, we came together. And we had to convince our general secretary that, look, we want the speaker. The speaker has a lot of work to do. He needs to be able to carry both sides of the house. Let us allow it to go. Mm. So we will nominate the independent mm -hmm. instead of maybe nominating our own. So yeah. I had to rush back to not talk to Dominique Ini and Abena. Look, this Did thing, they understand? Yeah. Oh, yes, because they, they understood exactly what was at stake. We needed to be able to carry the house. Because remember, the speaker, if you look at other six, mm -hmm. I mean, has a lot of... Uh, power and they can do a lot of things. So let's show that we, we don't intend to witch hunt. Mm. So let's give it out. So mm -hmm. they all agreed and we had to give it out. We'll, we'll, talk, about, we'll talk about the military invasion yeah. shortly because I've seen a number of questions on that as well. But on that night, watching closely, we watched everything. Mm. Uh, we were there as well. I saw that Honorable Kennedy Japan at some point, we are expecting that at least he will be in the midst of the chaos, but uh, some have already said that he should be the Peace Council chairman because of his posture and that of uh, Katie Hammond as well. Yeah. At some point, he whispered something to you. What exactly was he telling you? I was shocked. You? I was shocked. I told him. And later, when, when we were almost gone, I said, well, the day that the wise one has become mad, I thought that the, the, the mad ones had become wise, and we all laugh about it. He came to persuade us. And I, I, let me t admit, that day, I, dis I, 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 I take three people to say, maybe four. Mm -hmm. Katie, Kennedy Japan, mm -hmm. Katie Hamon, mm -hmm. Kennedy Japan, Afenya Markins, mm -hmm. and Nando Dompre. Mm -hmm. They did so well. Because they constantly try to reach out. How do we get out? And I kept telling them, we have to go by the law. I can bet you. If you go by the law, I may even decide to change the agent, change myself to another person, and go and sit. Mm -hmm. But so long as you want to follow your party instruction of breaking the law, we will not have this process. Mm -hmm. And you have Kennedy, the point of all persons, mm -hmm. coming to talk to me, oh my God, we beg you, let's try and see how we can get this process on. Because look, a lot of guests have been invited. I said, have you heard, the, you know, some were shouting insult. have you heard this person? Then you run to that person, then come back. Then whilst we are talking, the other person comes, I said, the ladies, uh, shouting insults. I said, oh, look, this insults will not help. You will go by the constitution, you will go by the rules. And admittedly, Katie, Kenneth Japan, I know them prayer, and I feel like they did so well. Because they kept trying to... Say, oh, so what can we do? Mm -hmm. What can we do? What can we do? Even though they constantly want a window for the showing. And I said, no, 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 how about the showing of the votes, please, out. And I, I, I think we must commend them. They did very well. Because if that day all of them had added to the chaos, maybe the chaos would have been worse than we also. OK, but let's start from the very beginning. Uh, there's a question here that's asking, why did the minority in the seventh parliament yeah, occupy minority. the position? No, uh, your side, the NDC <laughs> side. They're talking about the seventh parliament, so it's yeah. a minority. Yeah. Occupy the position of the majority when that parliament had not been dissolved. Because as of the time you came into parliament, yes. the seventh parliament was still in session. No. It had been dissolved technically, but it was supposed to die at midnight. Yes. It, hasn't, it hadn't died yes. at the point, but you still occupied the side of... You saw everybody who entered there was MP elects. Okay. It was not the seventh parliament. Mm -hmm. The seventh parliament was gone. Okay. So, and you see the interesting thing, look at this standard orders. From the first sheet to the last page, mm -hmm. nowhere does it talk about where MP sits. No. So why is it... It is our own convention. So why is it a big deal? Yeah, it is our own convention mm -hmm. that we've chosen that those in the majority will sit to the right of Mr. Speaker, uh -huh. and those with minority will sit to the level. And in this instance, we don't have majority. Because our majority is defined clearly in the standard orders. The party that had the largest number of MPs after election. Mm -hmm. And after this election, no single party had the la you can You can't call any of us as the largest. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, you don't tell me where I sit. But at this point, what I came first. So I chose where I want to sit. We are not comfortable with the left side anymore. No, it's not about being comfort. Mm -hmm. I came first and I chose where I, I want to sit because if Was it I were, if, I were if we were, if we were one, 130 and they were, say, one for, uh, 145, uh -huh. 
will have kept to our, our convention, even though it's not in the standard orders. The convention is that those with the largest number will sit to the right of us. But in this, it's 137, 137. Uh -huh. So why is anybody also asking them, oh, why did they come late? We came early <laughs> and we sat where we thought was more convenient for us for that day. Okay, so if you had the least numbers, you wouldn't have sat on that. No, side. no, no, because we'll have stuck because in Parliament three things were mm -hmm. the Constitution, the standard orders, and our mm -hmm. practices. Mm -hmm. So we'll have gone with our practice. Okay. But in this instance, it's one. So, so on one. Friday, we are reconvening on yeah. Friday. Are you still sitting by, at the right hand side? Uh, my expectation is that now that we have a speaker, maybe the speaker will convey a meeting of the both sides of the house, uh, the leaders, for almost all of these things to be discussed because it's not only even the sitting. What do we do with committees? Because usually those in the majority will form all the chairpersons. Now we don't have that. Mm. Our view is that, I mean, I feel very strongly about it. We need to split the committees. Yes, there are some committees. Already, we were already on our way to getting as new standard orders. And the new standard order, we're going to make it so that yeah, there are some committees that we have to give to those in government. And some committees, those in government like finance, mm -hmm. foreign affairs, intelligence, defense and interior to those in government. Then social legislation, government assurance, and then public accounts to those uh, in opposition. Mm -hmm. Then we'll now sh uh, share the rest of the committees based on our strength from okay. the election. But this, we are, even before the new standing orders kicked in, we are confronted with a situation where we have equal strength. So it gives us an opportunity to start the split of the committee. Uh, but at this point, what we are waiting for is a from 9MP to officially uh, write to the Speaker yeah. or tell the House that yes. he's sitting yes. on the side of the NPP. He's not sitting. Okay, he's well, going to Caucus and you see, working, and working I keep telling them. people, working with a caucus doesn't add your number to it. Because look at our constitution very clearly. I mean, Article 97, G and H is very clear. If G is talking about party, if you are from one party and decide to cross, what will happen? And then uh, H is talking about if you are independent. When it came to two and it was exempting, it's exempted parties. So if, let's say, PNC and MPP decide to talk at their national level and agree. You can sit with them. Mm -hmm. But with the independent, when it came to two, it didn't exempt him. So the independent can never join any of the side. He can only... But with the Samia president? Samia president never. Start with the minority. No, she never. Samia later, my... later, the speaker forced her to... No. I, I pulled up that uh, Check. article Check. when I joined online. Check. She later sat with the minority. No, she insisted Today. that we should rather amend our standard orders. I was in Parliament. Mm -hmm. Samia said, I won't. So Samia never attended our caucus meeting. She never, she's alive, you can find out for her, whether she has ever attended our caucus meeting. She never attended our caucus because she said, no, I am not comfortable with joining any side. I want to be alone. But she can't be alone in Parliament. No, she? I'm saying, but find out whether she has ever attended any of the caucuses. Mm. She insisted. And I thought at that time, we should have taken the opportunity to amend our standard orders, to take care of that, but we didn't. Mm. So what he can do, he can join a caucus, so when we are sharing committee and everything, he will get, but he can never be added to any number. Okay. That is why in the brochure itself, it was one to seven, one to seven, one, and that's how it will remain. Mm. Do we know who brought in the military that night? We don't know, and I think that's what the investigation that we need to find out. But whoever did that cannot get this, cannot go unpunished. The person must go punished. The person will have to be punished because what the person did was virtually to subvert, to subvert our constitution. The, the, the chamber of the house, I mean, you've seen other parliaments. Tell me, America, UK, they even exchange blows because on the floor of the house, there's that immunity for members. For you to have ordered boot men mm -hmm. into the chamber, you have committed a crime. But you are posing a danger to each other. Ooh. That's what um, the explanation that's has, we at have, least. That's, what, we, that's why we have a marsha. Mm -hmm. That's you said it yourself, that they were... No. So if the marshal is failing, mm -hmm. the chair of the district could have suspended the, the process. But it is not for anybody to take upon him or herself to order the bootman into the chamber. Mm -hmm. That needs to be investigated, and that person needs to be punished. Because that was absolutely wrong. That was virtually like a coup d'etat. Are your that preliminary findings, what is it revealing? No, unfortunately... Uh, that day, the interior minister was in the chamber, mm -hmm. the defense minister is in the chamber, the national security minister was in the chamber, and uh, the two deputy chief of staff were, were all MPs elect. They were all in the chamber. All of them are saying, I didn't authorize, I didn't order. But if there's a committee, at least we saw, uh, is it uh, K4E or the, one of the police officers? Which and you didn't want the to enter. And the colonel. Mm -hmm. 
If they appear before the committee, they will tell who asked them to come in. If they appear before the committee, they will tell who authorized them in. Mm. Because you saw how they pushed Honorable Kennedy upon. When he was trying to stop down at the entrance, they pushed him aside, almost hit him. And they shock uh, Honorable Roxon, the Afyama with electric distance. A taser. Yeah, so, I mean, this is something that needs to be investigated. And the perpetrators who have to be they must learn to know. I mean, it is those kind of person that must never be allowed to be ministers. It clearly shows how they can be abused. They even forgot that night they were no longer ministers. And they were still ordering military and police. Those people, whoever did the authorization, was abusing, is the type that will abuse his office. And that person, I don't think the person qualifies, he or she qualifies to be a minister again. Okay, so questions now. Um, uh, Facebook, we'll go back to Facebook, WhatsApp, and then Twitter uh, for more of your questions uh, before we wrap up uh, the show. So this one is uh, still on uh, WhatsApp. It says, asking whether you should admit that. Okay, so this one we've taken already. Uh, this is a question that we've gone through. That's Martha's question. We've gone through it already. Um, this one also we have. Uh, these are the very first questions that we've gone through. Um, so, Mr. Forsen, we'll go through uh, others because we've gone through these ones already. We've gone through Francis's question also. This closed out the choice. Yes, we've gone through them already. So, um, there is another one that says, given all that has happened, how should the Eighth Parliament proceed so as to build more consensus and put its chaotic stats behind? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this I, I perfectly like, and that's why I was telling you that. I mean, well, even when we won, after we won, we needed, we decided to be magnanimous. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, we'll have, we could have pushed the inauguration to uh, 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. by insisting that we vote on every, the first bit and second bit. But we didn't have any issue with uh, Osewu, so we thought I'd say, find that I accept some of his comments about uh, those who lost their life at the election were, were, were criminals, I mean, which we disagree with mm -hmm. him. And I believe that the, the whip have started very well. Because, yes, he's a government whip. He's been to my office twice. We've had calls because we have to share the offices to members. We needed to start doing a lot of things together. And I think that it started well. And I've also called on him. So, and Afenio Mankins is reaching out. I want to believe that uh, the government, leader of government business, should be reaching out to Manu, uh, the opposition leader, mm -hmm. Honorable Harun Edisu. So that before even speaker calls us into a meeting, we need to begin to reorient ourselves. I, I believe that Honorable Isis is having a hangover. I mean, because he what came. What kind of hangover? Yeah, because he came from the, the morning where he had 169 members. Uh -huh. uh, so, oh, you can be here, or if you want, you can do whatever you want to do, because he, he showed the 169, he will be able to have the numbers to do his thing. And he, he ran into. Now 137, and he forgot that his house 137, 137. He was still thinking that his house 169, and I believe that that retuning must be done by him. Mm. I mean, even though I know he's going to have a lot of time because the bullying in the seventh parliament was just so much that I doubt whether I sitting here will trust him when he comes to the oh, can we negotiate about this because he was never a consensus builder. He just ran the house. If you want, come. If you want, you can stay away. We don't care. We have what it takes to do it. And that was how he was running the house. Now that we have this, I believe he must sit, reflect, and realize that a new dawn has come. Because, uh, they gave us the, the list of chance that we could do what we did. So it's payback time? No, it's not payback time. I thought that the first day has taught him. Even if an independent says, I'll work with you, when you go for voting, does not necessarily give you 138. Mm -hmm. Because we ended up getting 139. We ended up getting 139. And they were struggling with 136. So this should tell him the kind of parliament that we have, if we can build consensus and work together and respect each other, it will do all of us a lot of good. Okay. So there's one question that says, uh, they boycotted the investiture of the president, yet uh, they've served notice. They will sit through and vet his ministerial nominees. Isn't this uh, not a display of inconsistencies? And there's one also from Mima. Okay, so that's, uh, that question is the same one. Uh, and then there's one also that says, that what's the strategy of the NDC going forward, especially for vetting of minister designates appointed by the president? <laughs> you want me to talk about us on TV? To the glare of everybody in the it's world. Affected. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I can't talk. I can't talk about our strategy. Obviously, we'll be very strategic. I mean, we've shown that God was on our side. With all humility, we worked very hard. We prayed. We organized. We strategized. And remember, believe me, 
We set five things to do that night and we achieve all. Mm. Yes. And I believe that... Five. Number one. Five. <laughs> to sit on the <laughs> license of Mr. Speaker, I will start there. Number two. To make sure that the, secret, the voting was secret and we got it. Number three. To win the speaker and we won. Number four. I'm, t I'm not telling you that four and five. Why? <laughs> Why? I'm not telling you four, the four and five. Was it the chaotic scene? No, no, no. I mean, we didn't expect it to be chaotic. We didn't expect it to be chaotic. So we are going to be strategic. We are going to be magnanimous. We will work in the best interest of this country. But believe me, anybody who is coming for voting, please mm -hmm. prepare. Mm. Yes. The so days, the days that morning. you come, you just say anything, and then you go, because the people have a number, then hey, and then get away, it's over. So please, when you are coming, take us more serious. Because if you take us less serious, you may get the shock of your life. Are you hoping to take the chairmanship of the appointments committee? No, I mean, that one is in our standing orders. Okay. It's only the first deputy speaker that chairs that it. takes it. Okay. Yes. Okay. But did you have the blessing of Mr. Haruna Idrisu that night to go radical the way you did? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me, let me say this. In Parliament, a lot of people don't know, it's the whips that control what happens. It's just like the car engine. You see the body of the car is nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's the one that tells how the car is. But the one that runs the car is the engine. That is not normally seen. It's just so unfortunate that in this instance, the opportunity came for people to really see what the whips were doing. And I can tell you, this thing that we did, I give, I mean, you saw my leader, when we met his Excellency John Dramat Mama, mm -hmm. was saying that the victory should, 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 be, going to, should be coming to me. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it should be coming to me. It should be going to the, all the caucus members. Because if you have a whip and you, you, can't, you refuse to listen to the whip, you refuse to take simple lawful instructions from the whip, I mean, you have difficulties. For them to have followed, listened to the instructions, followed through the organization, the strategy, and just at every point in time, listen to what the whip was saying. I mean, it, the credit goes to them because if they had refused following what the whip said, I mean, the whip would be useless. So I, I don't take the credit. The credit goes to them. This is how we are going to work. Mm. And Honorable Haruna Idrisu, unfortunately, leads us. I mean, he's not my type. He's very diplomatic, I mean, a little more soft. <laughs> Unfortunately, if I want something done, I do it in my heart, and mm -hmm. it's not like that. And where I think you, especially where you think that you are going to use your muscles mm -hmm. to flex, then maybe you may have to kill me. Because, You're a strong man. No, not that I'm strong. That's why I'm saying you may have to kill me, because maybe you may be far stronger than me. I will insist that the right thing be done. You don't, diplomacy is out of the question. No, no, I am very diplomatic. For those who have worked with me, they will tell you. When you are diplomatic, we can talk diplomacy. We can, you know, in negotiations, nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't hide some and then put some on the table and say, can mm -hmm. we agree on this? And when we agree, then you pull that one. That one, you can't get me. I don't know we may tolerate some. I can't. Mm. Put all your cards on the table. Let me put all mine on the table. Then we negotiate from A to Z. You can't put A to D and hide the rest and pull that one fast on me. No, I won't agree. Mm. So I must say, I mean, he's giving me a big opportunity, he's giving me a lot of opportunity. All the leaders I've served, from Right Honorable Babin, I was his whip. Yeah. I mean, Kumbo, I was Kumbo's whip, and Haruna's whip. I've been very lucky. I mean, they give me the opportunity to operate. I will tell them what we are going to do, and they sanction it, and I carry on with it. Briefly, what kind of whip are you? Because you've been a whip yeah, 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 throughout yeah. the period. I mean, yes, I, I, I think I'm the longest serving whip in yeah. the Fort Republic. Huh? And I've learned a lot. I mean, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful to my colleagues that they keep. Sometimes opportunity comes for me to go out. Everyone say, ah, if you move out, what happens to the whip? Mm. Because you do it so well. Well, I take delight that my colleagues have so much confidence mm. in me. And they think that, I mean, it's a, it's a role we have to play. Mm. It doesn't matter whether you are the speaker or the leader or the deputy whip or a backbencher. Once we acknowledge that one of us can play a particular role very well, and we keep encouraging him to play that role. I'm happy playing that role mm. because I'm, I'm, I'm able to carry all my members along and I'll fight and defend every one of them. Mm. Where they go wrong, I mean, they know I will not hesitate okay. to, 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 to institute uh, disciplinary measures as the whip's office is. I do the best that I can and I'm happy serving in that office. Mm. I missed the snatching of uh, ballot boxes, ballot yes, papers, man. not you. Uh, it <laughs> happened at least. Uh, yes, yes. He, p picking up of the ballot yes, box yes. you did. You say that, so, yeah. and, and then snatching of ballot papers. I missed all that. We saw the sitting 
of um, a female MPS law was on the lap of um, Kwame Lamine That was very unfortunate. I thought that, I don't know, for lack of better words, it should have been more civil. Because you see, what she did to call his order? Maybe she should be thanking her stars that is called his order. I believe that if it was any other gentleman, maybe he would not be that patient. And that could have been more chaotic. Because you see, it's unfortunate that I didn't see who pushed her. Oh. When, I, when I look at the video, all I saw was that she was on her knee. We're told it was the next snobby. Uh, that's what we're oh, okay. told. Because Showed the, their office. The, because they, that was very, that, that was that was terrible. Mm -hmm. That was very bad. Because she she honourable avocat that was seated there. He stood up, and then she came and sat there. Avocat came and did everything, and she said she wouldn't get up. So I even called avocat and said, that, "Look, I can see a, an empty seat next to honourable address Why don't just go there?" So he went there. So what she was there, I kept telling my mother, no, leave her. She was looking for confrontation. Don't confront her. Mm. To be very, very frank with you, all I saw was when she was on her, on her knee. Mm. And then she started the push on uh, Honorable Collins' daughter in a very violent way. And I can't imagine if I, can, I, can, I, I cannot just imagine if Honorable Collins' daughter had decided to behave the way she did, what would have happened. Mm. But we're on, sitting on the lap of Honorable Akando, I mean, that was that was very disgraceful, because for a lady to do, I don't know what got him to be seated there. I also believe that once she was seated there, yes, it may sound that that was our side, but because of what had happened, I don't think it was right for him to also go have gone to have sat okay. there. But okay. when she came back, I don't think that was what she should have also done. Okay. Maybe she have grown at him because I remember when uh, nobody you said, push it. I know the umpire came to me and I said, Look, I swear to God, I can tell you. I didn't even see it. Know. But if you are saying nobody, I'm, I'm promising you, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Have you spoken to him since yes. then? Yes, yes. And what did he say? Well, he was arguing. That, no, he was standing there. I said, okay. But I played the video. Unfortunately, those who captured the video couldn't capture. Really, really in the act. It was a, a lot of people were standing there. I think it was when she felt that maybe the cameras came there. So we'll be dealing with that. Okay. Because I thought that that was wrong. So I assured Anuda and that that will be dealt with. Mm. So I thought that when she came to meet Akando, yeah. she would have gone back to Anuda and Prayer. And I would have, asked, I would have just graciously gone there to tell Akando okay. to get up. Well, but yeah, I want you to this. watch this, uh, watch this video, and then we can wrap up. Oh, you know, that was my, my daughter's uh -huh. birthday. Uh -huh. I mean, she was born on 26 May. So on her birthday, she insisted I must dance with her. Uh -huh. I know she's a, she's a daughter I'm so fun. So I said, it's the okay, same then. one you went to the polling station yes, with? Yes, Okay. So, uh, Khadija, <laughs> so we danced. And I don't know. Okay. This was a family thing. Only the family. And then now the thing is great, everywhere. Great timing for the video. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a good yeah. note uh, to end tonight's edition mm -hmm. of The Probe. We are grateful uh, for your time here on The Probe tonight. Alaji Mutaka Mubarak. Uh, we'll be watching out, uh, looking out for the 8th Parliament. We'll definitely be with you. Thank you so much for joining us. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. A Walk with Jesus is up next on radio. Please stay.